and welcome to part three of this video. That makes it look like six. No, it's part three. And again, disclaimers on the screen because I just think that's quite important. And if you haven't seen the other parts, make sure you go check them out. Okay, first one, let's just address this super good glow screen. The reason why is in my bronzer section is because the shade. So it's the darker shade of the two. So I kind of use it as a liquid bronzer before my makeup. So this is why it's in a bronzer section. This is a newly stick, so a bronzer stick in Bondi Bay. Um, so one of my subscribers, Charlotte, left me a comment and said newly sticks got some like shady history. I looked it up and yeah, they're definitely shady. But the thing is, I mean, I don't buy any new sticks products anyway. This is the only one I have. So I'm just gonna try to use it up really. The undertone is too orange anyway. So it's really not my favorite. Good for the summer to really sort of give your face super bronzy, glowy type of look but for an everyday, it's too warm for me. The rest of my powder bronzers, Hula Benefit. So this is the original. And honestly, again, I think this is just a little bit too warm. It's not my favorite bronzer. And Becca bronzer. This is probably like, it's one of those bronzers that's a little bit almost too pale on my skin, but I kind of like that because I can just keep going and going and going and not worry about looking like an Oompa Loompa. Um, so I actually really like this. Barley Sands, it's got really nice glow to it. It applies easily, blends easily. This is actually a really good Becca product. Seattle London Bombu Bronzer has um, kind of, I use it in a similar way in that it's kind of a subtle bronzer for me. Um, it's a little bit warmer though than the Becca. So I have to be a little bit more careful, but again, it's one of those bronzers that blends out really easily. The shade that I have is Palm Island. I think ideally I would prefer a lighter shade. The Hourglass Bronzer Radiant Bronze Light. I didn't actually want to get Radiant Bronze Light. I was in Space and K and asked for Nude Bronze Light, but the cashier gave me the wrong shade. I didn't check and they were closing at that point. They were too busy chatting between themselves. So I was a little bit annoyed because again, this is quite a warm bronzer. So I have to be careful and kind of use a light hand really. Otherwise it can get a little bit too much. Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This is a shade light bronzer. And again, it is one of those tones that is just a touch darker than my skin. So it gives my skin a little bit of a subtle bronze. I kind of like just adding kind of a little bit of dimension back to my face with light colored bronzers than kind of really obvious bronzers. Do you know what I mean? And obviously butter bronzer, it's a good classic. It blends easily, it smells like coconuts. Now, this is my current favorite bronzer. And you can't get it anymore. It's the Marc Jacobs Fantastic. Do you guys have this? Like, did you buy it when it was super hyped? I bought it when Marc Jacobs was closing down. It's weird, right? Why am I buying products if from brands when they're closing down? I think it's a FOMO. But you know what? This bronzer is so good. It has the perfect tone for me. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. It bronzes my face without looking like... I've just been in the sun because sometimes I don't want that. Do you know what I mean? I just want a little bit of definition to the face. It blends super easily. It smells fantastic. The mirror is huge. Honestly, this is so good. And it's quite sad that you can't get this anymore. So these are my single eyeshadows. Let's just ignore this section from a brand from whom it shall not be named. Uh, these two eyeshadows are from Kiko Milano, which I keep saying is just really underrated because look how pretty these are, right? They are so gorgeous. And I believe these are from Nabla. Do they say anything in the back? Yes. So these three are from Nabla. I, I think I just wanted a really good khaki matte shade at the time and that's what I got. That was a terrible swatch. Let me just do that a bit better. It's because my finger is still wet, that's why. But these are super pretty shades as well. So um, this palette has some stuff from Makeup Geek, uh, some Colourpop, I believe this is Colourpop. So yeah, Glass Bull from Colourpop, which is a classic shade, right? I mean, can you get 
I mean, that is still really pretty. This is another color pop. Like, I've got a lot of kind of pinky lilac -y shades here. And I think both of these, one of them is Nabla, and one of them is uh, Makeup Geek glitter from Colourpop. I don't know why I have this. Like, I don't use this. This is strange. Why do I have this? <laughs> this is difficult to use. And these two oranges from Colourpop doesn't look like they have been touched. That's probably because they have not been touched. I've got some indie brands random bits here as well. So these two shades are from like a random Instagram account that I found that was in the UK and I thought I'd give them a go, but I don't really like them. They're sort of cream eyeshadows, but they look really pretty, but actually they're swatching really dry. So that's a lot of single eyeshadows. Okay, this is not everything yet, but at the risk of having things off frame. So this is one of the Kathleen Lights collaboration. I had more of these, but I did clutter them. I had a brown one as well, but I gave that to a friend. It's just because, you know, these pigments, they are really pretty, but at the end of the day, pigments are just less easy to use. And this is also now discontinued. I don't really know what happened between Kathleen Lights and Colourpop. Like her collection just got taken off like she didn't mention it, Colourpop didn't mention it. Did something happen and her discount code doesn't work anymore either. Other pigments that I have are these Colour Cosmetics ones. I'm just going to put these ones aside. So these are my uh, Colour Cosmetics products and they are freaking amazing. Uh, they do a lot of multi-chrome, dual-chrome products. I don't know if you can see but this is the shade Midnight. It's got a blue purpley shift and I'm going to see if I can get it to show on the back of my hand. It is so pretty. Um, so they do press versions and loose versions. Obviously press versions is just easier to store and use, but quite a lot of their products is loose. I am willing to make the effort for Carla Cosmetics for their loose glitter multi-chrome stuff because they are just too pretty. And one of them is actually a shadow potion. So this is a shade Slumber Party it is a liquid eyeshadow. Whoa. Okay, I need to put that on my eyes. This is Teddy Bear. I find it really difficult to describe these shifts and I definitely don't think you need all of them because quite a lot of them just will look similar on the eyes and it's really more kind of what shifts, what colour shifts into what colour because it might be a pink green shift or a green pink shift. So when you put it on your eyes, with one colour it will look mostly pink and with the other colour it will look mostly green. Does that make sense? Um, so this is Teddy Bear. It's got green, pink, and a bit of lilac in there as well. And this is Pillow Fight. Uh, it's got kind of orange, pink, gold. This is a shade Chill. And this is Pigtails, which is quite different. You can see that it's got a really strong kind of corally base. And I think quite a lot of these, oops, came in like a little bundle. So I didn't pick the shades myself because I don't think Pigtails is a shade that I really would have bought if I had a choice. And it's just kind of like a pretty light iridescent orange, really. Doesn't really have that much shift to it. Bubble Bath, which I really love. Oh, it's got a lilac -y, pinky greeniness to it. Really, really pretty. Sleepy Head. Sleepy Head is my favourite. It's just amazing in its, it's got like four or five different colours, I swear, in just this one little pigment. Just watch it here. It's got like blue, it's got a bit of lilac, it's got a bit of pink, it's got a bit of green. I'll put a picture of what the true colour looks like. This is Pixie Magic. This is a glitter, so this is not really a pigment. I use this in my recent shorts of recreating Taylor Swift's Lavender Haze video look. See, yeah, so you can see it's definitely chunkier. Oh, it's so pretty though. It is so pretty. We, I use it with NYX glitter glue and it sticks on without an issue. So another indie brand that I found was Magical Makeup. They had those um, single shadows that I didn't really like, uh, but these pigments are so much more fun. This is Mermaid Tears. Like, it's just iridescent flakes. Um, I feel like I have nail polish that's like this, but I think this will look cool on the eyes. 
And this is Rainbow Dust, which again is that pretty iridescent, pinky, greeny, bluey shade. Luna. So these are, you know, super finely milled pigments as well. Look, they're so pretty. I think they, they actually, on swatch, they feel a little bit more rough compared to Color Cosmetics. I do think, I think Color Cosmetics are a lot more expensive as well, and I do think it's better than this brand. Uh, but this brand has these hollows as well. I think Color Cosmetics might have them as well, but this is silver hollow and pink hollow. I used this in my New Year's Eve look that is up on my community tab, and I got a different version of pink. And another random brand is a Sample Beauty. Actually, I got another one here. They're both Sample Beauty, and this is a bronzy glitter and the other one again is one of those pastel iridescent glitters i do not need all of these like this is ridiculous right having so many but this is this is like that ColourPop press glitter but prettier sample beauty um, i think they're on beauty bay they're just really really affordable actually uh this feels grittier than color cosmetics though still pretty but feels grittier and here we go, have some Colourpop. This is the Jelly Much Eyeshadow in She Grows. Uh, this is another Jelly Much Eyeshadow. Desert Days. I believe they were on sale, which is why I got them. And this one as well, oh, which is a very pretty sage bundle. Uh, and I've got these. This is crap. This is, I thought this might be like the MAC Paint Pot. But the thing is, I don't even like a MAC Painterly Paint Pot. So why did I get this? It's super dry. It's like one of those cream eyeshadows. I, I don't like it. And then of course the Super Shock eyeshadows, which are amazing. Uh, this is the shade Dill, which is a matte one. And it's just such a pretty cool tone mauve. I, it's shattered <laughs> quite a few times, um, but it's very, very beautiful. I think it's drying out a little bit. So it's not swatching as well. It swatched a lot better when I first got it. And these are all very, very pretty glittery shades. I've got Ritz, I've got Frog. I mean, these two are such classics. Let me swatch them. So this is Ritz. Just look at how gorgeous that is. <gasps> it's so pretty. Love it. It's got more of a base compared to the uh, Urban Decay Moon Dust Space Cowboy. And this is Frog. Frog is like a dupe for the Natasha Denona Galaxia shade from the Mini Retro palette. Both of these shades are such good ones. If you ever buy any Super Shock shades, these two. Just these two. That's all you need. Um, I do also like these though. So this is Lightning Bug and this is Nirina. This is also very gorgeous. Bronzy. It's got like pink glitters. It's got blue glitters. Really, really pretty. And then we've got Lightning Bug, which is a metallic copper with kind of silver sparkles throughout. Oh, that is a good coppery shade. And the final shade, I believe, is called Tea Party. No, it's not. It's called Sweetie. Wow. Which is a coral pink with... It's not... It's got a slightly gold shift to it. So, there we go. I forgot about these two colour pop super shots hiding as well. Again, got them in a sale because they, you know, when... Like a collection that is old, and by old I mean like a day old and it's still on the website, it goes into a discount. So these two are pretty super shock shades as well. They are kind of a dark, more red, pink kind of color story. It's not a color story I usually wear, so I, that's why I got it in a kind of cheaper formula. The thing is, I got so much makeup thinking that I'm gonna create all of these looks and I don't end up doing it, which is just stupid. So these are the rest of my single eyeshadows and I'm just going to start with some creamy ones again. Um, this is actually a base, I'm just going to put that back for a sec. So Shiseido Aura Dew, you know how much I love this already. And it kind of looks like Ritz but with less base. Seattle London Twisted Metals Potted Eyeshadow, they look like marble and this is a really pretty green. Like It's very similar to this actually which is the Urban Decay Moon Dust Eyeshadow in Zodiac. Um, but the Seattle London obviously is creamier because it's a cream eyeshadow. And actually it's got more payoff. Here we go. This is a really nice formula. 
they have this in lots of different shades. I would totally recommend. Another one is this Marc Jacobs eyeshadow. I feel like this reminds me of the Victoria Beckham lid luster. Uh, this is a very kind of gum metal silver. Love it, look at how shiny. Sorry, Marc Jacobs, uh, you can't get this anymore. Hourglass, obviously. This is the shade, ooh, smoke. And it's just so pretty. I wore this again the other day and remembered how much I love this formula. It, it really is just gorgeous in terms of its glitteriness, its color, like it's just wearable in its tones. It still looks sophisticated. Expensive, but yeah, it's good. And this is a bodyography one. Let me clean my hands a little bit. Which is also kind of like a greeny black. It's got a bit of gold in there as well. I'm just gonna swatch it next to the other ones that I have. So there we go. So this is more like a black gold than a greeny gold. And the other cream eyeshadow I have is from Star Wars. Uh, I've got a whole video on this. I'm not gonna bother swatching it, but I've got the shade Rouge Re Rebellion, the red shade. Okay, so I think these are just normal single eyeshadows that I haven't depotted. Uh, these Bobbi Brown eyeshadows, so Heat Ray, they are pretty pricey. They are really not cheap, but it's got very smooth finish. And this is Sun Flare, which is more of like a glitter type of finish. Um, I really, I wore these two a lot when I first got them. And then I've got a couple more Kiko Milano shades. So this is the water color eyeshadow. This is a shade, what's the shade? 213. I don't think they have names, they just have numbers. So it's kind of like metallic teal, dark teal. And this is a gold, which is 208. I remember this, I mean, I don't remember this making the rounds on YouTube, to be honest, but I think it did make the rounds on YouTube at some point That's to be used as a highlighter. You can see it's a very pretty pale gold. And the other Kiko Milano single that I have, it's this really gorgeous blue. I remember I was on the hunt for just a really beautiful blue shade because I didn't want to buy the subliminal palette from Pat McGrath and that was the ever that was my first ever Pat McGrath palette and so I kept looking for blue shades that might look like that but in the end I bought the Pat McGrath anyway but this is a gorgeous blue really pretty I already talked about this one I just put it there again for counting um ba -bum -bum -bum. and Urban Decay, Space Cowboy. Oh, it's so shattered. It's so old, it's cracked so many times, but you just push it back together and it's absolutely fine. I'm running out of room. My hand is so stained. But yeah, you see, it's just got less base than Ritz from ColourPop. So I guess it gives a slightly more obvious sort of glittery effect. And then I've got two very old idols from Pat McGrath. I think they've actually dried out a little bit because maybe I didn't shut it properly or something. But this is a shade divine mink which is a gray with a lot of depth and a lot of different tones and that's the thing with pat mcgrath eyeshadow it's like it's not just a gray it's a gray with this undertone you when you blend it out and it looks like you've actually got three shades on your eyes when it's just one eyeshadow and that's why they're so good and this is the purple one called purple rain this one has definitely dried out a little bit like super bright purple now, of course, then I have all of these Doze of Colours eyeshadows that I keep banging on about. And I don't know if any of you guys have bought it. Like, if you have bought this following my recommendation, let me know how you like it. But these are all so pretty. And I'm making a mess, obviously. So this is what it looked like. Okay. So shall, shall we swatch them? Let's swatch them. This is the shade Wild and Free. I'm gonna do it on my other hand. So this is kind of like a cool tone brown, a little bit mauvey leaning with silver sparkles, Wild and Free. And we've got the shade Sky's the Limit next, which looks very similar, but it's got a kind of like grey base with silver sparkles. I've had these for ages. It's for a really long time. And this is a shade Slinky, which is again another silver. So this one is a 
more, yeah, so this is a lighter grey silver. I think both of these still has that like a tiny bit of purple, like this one especially has a bit of purple to it, whereas this, you can see, it's just kind of minky silver. So this is Shall We Dance, with pink. This is less sparkly, it's just more like a metallic, and it's got kind of pink glitters throughout. And this one is Heart of Gold. It's kind of like a antique bronzy gold, so pretty. Again, this is definitely more of a shimmering metallic. Encore, I remember Kathleen Lights talking about this. It's a brown, like a warm brown base with a lot of gold sparkles. Really gorgeous. And lastly, Teal Me More. Teal Me More. So pretty. It is just so gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, so this is why I love these eyeshadows. Can you see? Can you see? And I, they were so expensive when they were first being sold and now they are, what, like four or five USD. And they even have a mirror as well. I mean, I, it, it's a steal. It is a steal. So the other random stuff that I have in that drawer is the Color Cosmetics Shadow Potion Primer, uh, the Inglot, what is it, Duraline, uh, really great for kind of making powder eyeshadows into liquid or for making pigments into liquids, classic NYX Glitter Primer, this is so good, this is so good, uh, Linda Halberg Eyeshadow Primer, I'm not sure how I feel about this actually, and Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer, which is a classic. Okay, again, just an excessive amount of stuff. Boo, boo, boo. Okay, so let's start off with these things. Um, NYX Jungle Eye Pencil in the Black Bean. Uh, it's a good base. Um, this is really ancient as well. I don't really use it that much, to be honest. And these are from the brand Gosh. Does anyone in the UK know about this brand? I don't know if they still exist, but these are so good. These eyeshadow sticks. Um, I've had like this brown one for a while and you just put it on, blend it out, it doesn't crease, it lasts forever. It's this just beautiful kind of neutrally, leaning slightly cool tone brown with silver sparkles. It's so good. Plum, the shade Plum. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. It's just really good metallic eyeshadow. Once, so you've got some time to, to blend it out, but once it blends, that's it, it sets and it just doesn't budge, doesn't crease, so good. Uh, I've got the shade, which I haven't opened yet, this is a matte shade, so they do it in metallics and matte. And this one is Twisted Brown. Like, look how easy that is. It is so easy. And the last one I have here, uh, Light Copper, the other metallic formula which it says light copper, but I feel like this is kind of like a mid-tone brown, really. Um, just putting it everywhere. My hands, I need to wash my hands, but gorgeous, gorgeous. I love using these two shades together. Dark gray, like a matte gray, oh. That is, I mean, look at that, that looks so good. Doesn't it look good? Okay. I'm gonna see if I can find them. If I can find them, I'll link them. They, it probably won't be an affiliate link, to be honest. Oh, and I've got the other shade here, dark brown. Okay. These two are kind of glass. What well, this is called infinity glass. What is this called? I don't know what it's called. In the clear. So these are eye glosses because I've wanted to do like a super cool editorial glassy lid situation for ages. So that's why I've got these. And here are all the liquid eyeshadows. I'm just gonna talk about these sample beauty ones first. So I got them when kind of About Face came out and I really like the idea of doing face painting in a way. Um, so I got these and I created a look using these pigments. Um, they, I think they were good for how I use them, but if you were gonna use them like eyeshadow, they are a little bit patchy and a little bit difficult to blend. Um, so I literally just use them like face paints and they are super affordable, so I can't really complain that much. So these two are underrated. 
from Ciate. They are the Shadow Flip Liquid Eyeshadows. And I love these. I'm running out of room on my hand. So this one has a green purple flip. And I know it does like look like it's going on patchy right now. And the thing is, I think it's kind of difficult to make them non-patchy just because the way the light reflects. Um, but what I found is if you do a layer, let it dry and then do another layer, it looks great. So, and also because it's liquid, you can just blend out a little bit to a thin amount and then just like a veil of color rather than full on impact like this. These are so good. Um, two other ones, I don't think you can get them anymore. It's also by Ciate, it's the Eye Luster Cream Eyeshadows. Um, they burnt my eyes when I first used them, but now they're okay. I think it just depends when my eyes are feeling a little bit sensitive. So they're sort of pastel, multi-chromes type of situation. Very pretty, but I think that sometimes it'd be slightly difficult to pull, pull off just because they're so shiny, metallic and pastel. Um, I just don't really like super pale shades on my eyes. And then of course I've got the Steeler Glitter and Glow. I had more of these but they dried out. I think this one is still okay, although now that I'm saying that, I feel like maybe not. Uh, this is the shade Wonderlust, which is again sort of got a slightly duochrome quality to it. So it's got a pink gold flip. It's really pretty. I think I can resurrect it if I put some Duraline in there. Urban Decay Heavy Metal Eyeliner. Uh, it's technically an eyeliner, but I put it in my eyeshadow collection because that's kind of how I use it. Um, this is very old. Again, this was, like, I love blues, so... And I just have, like, a lot of bluey eyeshadows. I think the trick is to take the stopper out and you can get more product. And Interstellar from Linda Halberg Cosmetics. They have three different shades. This is the only shade that's in stock at the moment. This is just a gorgeous gold and it's got pink reflex in there as well and a bit of silver, like the base is gold but honestly as you blend it out the base just kind of disappears and you're just left with this veil of sparkliness. So I feel like this is essentially Space Cowboy but in a different formula with a slightly different undertone. Space Cowboy is definitely more cool whereas I feel like this just has a touch of warmth in it. I love this. It's so pretty. You can just wear this alone on your eyes and a bit of mascara and you're good to go. And of course I've got five of the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex eyeshadows. The one that I love the most is Bianca. When I wore this, all of you guys were asking what was on my eyes. I was in one of my lip swatch videos. The other shades are good as well. If you want to see a swatch of them, I have a video on my channel. But I, I'm not a huge fan of liquid eyeshadow, so I haven't bought any more from Lisa Eldridge. <laughs> 